How are speaker impedances chosen? This question comes from Jerry in Vancouver, Canada. One heck of a nice city. I, I remember we went to Vancouver, then went up to Whistler in, in, in Banff, which is a, a really cool ski resort. Nice glacier up there. We hiked up, if I remember right, we went to the top of this lift and then hiked up a ways and skied forever. These long, sweeping, uh, slalom turns. They're just way over here on this giant glacier. And then there was a, an ice cave. We stopped at the ice cave, took our skis off, walked inside of this ice cave. What a cool place. The only downside was there was the world's longest catwalk at the, at the end of the glacier. Like, <laughs> but anyway, um, a fun place. Great, great place to ski. Hi, Paul. I look forward to your videos each day and have learned so much from them. Why, thank you. Oh, yes, another impedance question. <laughs> we get a few of those. Um, for the most part, I can sort of wrap my head around all the speaker impedance confusions, but what I'd like to know is how speaker manufacturers arrive at set impedance. Is it a target before designing, or is it just where it ends up after final tweaking, and what are the advantages or disadvantages of, say, a 4-ohm or an 8-ohm speaker? I'll be ordering a Sprout for my KEF LS50s soon. All right, that's the same system I have at home. A Sprout and a KEF LS50. Speaker designers typically do choose whether they want an 8-ohm speaker or a 4-ohm speaker. And modern speaker designers typically choose 4-ohm speakers because we can get more watts into our speaker with modern amplifiers. So years ago, higher impedance speakers were important, 8 ohm, sometimes 16 ohm speakers, because amplifiers were really weenies back then. I mean, you were talking about, you know, tube amplifiers that had no power. They had matching transformers in the output. They, you had to, you know, made them up. And the higher the impedance, the better you would be. And those speakers were also very efficient. You'd have 96 dB speakers, 94 dB, 98 dB. So you only needed a few watts to drive them quite loud. But as amplifiers got more powerful over the years, solid state and tube amplifiers, it was possible to design drivers with lower impedance and ones that could accept more power. And the reason that you want to do that is because the lower the impedance in, in a speaker to, to a certain point, the, 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 the lower the distortion, the, the easier it is for the designer to create a powerful linear transducer because watts aren't something that are precious to him. As you can imagine, in engineering, we always say, there's no free lunch, right? I mean, you could say, well, wouldn't it be best if you, every speaker were 98 dB efficient and you only needed a, a pen light, you know, amplifier to drive it with one or two watts? Well, yeah, but consider that when you do that, there are all kinds of compromises made. You're not going to have spectacular bass. And if you do, you're going to have a horn the size of, you know, because now you have to get the loudness another way. You're going to have to do it with acoustic amplification, horns, or, uh, or you're going to make compromises in the driver to make it so efficient. It just, nothing is free in engineering. And so there's a point when you can start throwing more watts at a situation. If the amplifier doesn't mind, you're going to be much better off with a lower impedance. And since most amplifiers today can handle 4 ohms, that's what speaker designers shoot for. And uh, given that, then all we really want to do is make sure that the impedance of that speaker, the nominal impedance, hovers around four, five, six ohms and doesn't shoot up or dip down too, too low because that'll freak out an amplifier as well. So then we just, we try and maintain, you know, as, as steady an impedance as we can. You'll see on, like Stereophile is a great place to uh, see test measurements. And John Atkinson, or whoever is doing the, the test at the time, will show you an impedance curve. And, and you can see where it, you know it's 4 ohm, 4 ohm, 6 ohm, 8 ohms. And right at resonance, the impedance is going to go way up, and then it can dip down quite low. I had some Infinity 
kappa speakers that dip down to half an ohm. And that killed a lot of amplifiers, so not good. So common sense, reasonable impedances, that's what we shoot for, that's where you want to go. All right, have fun out there in Vancouver. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.